I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz slammed Governor Ron DeSantis during a House Oversight Committee hearing Thursday. Wasserman Schultz compared DeSantis to Putin, Maduro, and Castro, accusing the Florida governor of employing authoritarian and tyrannical tools. Here's more from the Florida Democrat. Um, uh, and I yield now to Ms. Wasserman Schultz for her five minutes of questioning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I have some questions for my fellow Floridian, Ms. Cousins, but I, I would be remiss if I didn't use this opportunity to engage with Pro Professor Snyder, who I understand is participating virtually. Pro Professor Snyder, my, my office loves your book on tyranny, and I, I firmly believe it, that it succinctly and effectively helped veer America away from its recent turn toward authoritarianism. So thank you for that. But I want to tap into that talent for concision and ask you some very quick yes or no questions and then get your larger take on my home state of Florida. Do repressive governments censor unpleasant history in their schools? Yes or no? Yes. Do tyrannical governments muzzle teachers from telling the truth? Yes. Do authoritarian leaders regularly demonize the free press? Yes. Do tyrants criminalize protesters? Yes. Do despots make it harder to vote? Yes. Do they abandon facts, science, and reason? Yes. Do autocrats target marginalized communities like gays or communities of color? Very much so. Thank you. Governor Ron DeSantis, the governor of my home state, deploys every one of these authoritarian tools in Florida. Some are now law. One of them became law just this week. Yet these are the same repressive tactics that thousands of my constituents fled from in Venezuela, Cuba, and Nicaragua. That's why they came to Florida. And now Governor DeSantis is bringing a, bringing a brand of authoritarianism to Florida that Putin, Maduro, or Castro would applaud. Mr. Snyder, should residents in Florida be resisting this rising authoritarianism of Governor DeSantis? And are we seeing the creeping anticipatory obedience that you talk about towards his repress, repressive policies that you warned about? So, number one, I think you're, you're, you're very right to make these comparisons. And Cubans of an older generation can actually remember school policies um, from their homeland, which are similar to the ones that are being implemented in Florida now. Number two, I think you're also quite right to talk about anticipatory obedience. It's very important not to see changes like this as normal and, as, and to allow them to come creeping in so that they become the new normal. Um, and number number three, should people be resisting Absolutely. I mean, the, the way that democracies are overcome in the 21st century is generally from within. And it's generally by, by, by clever leaders who find ways around the rules and find ways to create, um, to find ways to use minority positions which polarize in order Thank to you. move themselves towards the top. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Snyder. It's not enough to just describe Ron DeSantis as a culture warrior. We should call him what he is, a tyrant who is using his position and power to install repressive and hateful policies in Florida. I want to turn next to Ms. Cousins, because as a Floridian, you can give a firsthand account of how these policies impact children and families. Despite conservatives' assertions that anti-LGBTQ plus laws like Florida's Don't Say Gay Act are meant to protect younger students, the truth is they directly harm those students. For example, these laws would prevent children with same-sex parents or LGBTQ plus siblings from being able to discuss their families in school. And it would also require teachers to out LGBTQ plus students to their parents without the student's permission if the parent re requests the information and allows parents to sue schools should they fail to do so. Ms. Cousins, you're a Florida parent and you have a non-binary child in middle school as well as two younger elementary school students. How will your children be directly impacted by the Don't Say Gay law? Um, so my two youngest are rising first and third graders. So the way that this is going to impact us is if they should be discussing the makeup of our family or their older sibling whilst in the classroom, some kid over here that goes home and says, hey, guess what? So-and-so's sibling identifies this way. If the parent doesn't like the makeup of our family, they are now fully within the rights of the law to go and sue the school, and not only sue the school, but the school will now be responsible for paying for that lawsuit. And that is money that we desperately know in Florida could be better spent on teacher salaries and student funding itself. Can I zero in with you on that? Because you've clearly been supportive of your non-binary child. I want to ask you specifically about forcing teachers to out their LGBTQ plus students to their parents. 
I mean, schools are supposed to be safe havens, and they very often are for, the, for these kids. You've clearly been supportive of your, your child, but how do you think outing students to their parents could affect them? It's going to be devastating. Um, it's going to lead to higher rates of depression and definitely higher rates of suicide. You, you can't out a fragile child like that without them being ready for it. Um, and the reason that they can be safe in school is because they don't come from supportive families. You know, my child has several friends in school that are trans. They can only live their trans self while they're in school because their families are not supportive. And I fear so much for kids that come from families like that. Thank you. This isn't about enhancing parental authority. It's a direct attack on the LGBTQ plus community that will adversely affect the health and well-being of thousands of Florida students. And from one mom to another, I thank you for being supportive of your child. Thank you. It's so important. I yield back. Thank you.